Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 159.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released February 4th, 2015, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Cluster number 1. In the distant future, as mankind discovers life on other planets, it needs soldiers to defend its colonies and outposts across the stars. In order to increase the number of boots on the ground, criminals are offered the opportunity to serve in place of incarceration. But as wars rage on and more soldiers are needed, small all-time crimes are given long-term punishments. When a group of prisoners serving their time as soldiers become stranded and abandoned on a war-torn planet, they'll need to work together to survive and uncover the truth behind Earth's role in deep space. Next, we have Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, number three of six. As Caesar's search group ropes new apes into the fold, Pope begins to implement his siege for power and dominance over his newfound tribe. On the other side of America, Malcolm must decide between two worlds, a community built on stability and support, or going back on the road for the rumored cure in Austin. We've also got Escape from New York, number three. Are you ready for General Pliskin? The independent state of Florida has forced Snake to train their troops for the inevitable war with the United States. But you know Snake, he's not exactly employee of the year. He's just trying to find his freedom and may anger two warring factions in the process. Next we have Feathers number 2 of 6. Fresh from their near-miss escape from the guards, Bianca and Poe strike a deal. If he guides her through the treacherous maze, she will take him to see the White Guide, a feathered statue in the city that may hold the key to Poe's origins. It's an adventure that will take them from the lowest shadows to the highest rooftops with untold dangers along the way, and not everyone in the maze is happy about their new alliance. We've also got Fiction Squad number 5 of 6. Frankie finds himself back in the midst of chaos on the streets of Rhymes. While the case may have been cracked wide open, he has less than a day to do anything about it. The queens and witches are waging a war staged by the mysterious knife-wielding man and the livelihood of stories from all walks of the world are on the line. Frankie may have messed things up in his own story, but this time he'll not go down without a fight. Next we have Garfield number 34, His Nine Lives Part 2. Our trip through Garfield's Nine Lives continues with two more all-star artists. This month, Roger Langridge of the musical Monsters of Turkey Hollow brings us the fat cat on the high seas as we learn of Garfield's pirate past. Also, Yehudi Mikardo of Guardians of the Galaxy Universal Weapon draws Garfield in the Old West. We've also got Robocop number 8, War in the Streets, with an officer dead and more bodies adding to the count, things have gotten personal. Taking down Ed 2000X's and tearing through Killian's men, Robocop will not stop until this bloodbath comes to an end. As Killian takes to the press for protection, Detective Ann Lewis has only one target in her sights. Even if it means her badge and freedom, she will make him pay. Next, we have Steven Universe number 7. Steven just wanted a nice day with his friends, maybe some gardening with a slight chance of rain. Too bad some bugs have different ideas. Beach City is infested. What's going on with these bugs and why is Steven suddenly alone in this mission? And we've got Woods number 10. The more the crew finds out about the woods, the deeper the mystery gets. With Clay and the Duke teaming up to try and force the school into servitude for the new London army, the kids need to think up a plan to save their peers and fast. Can they escape New London and make it back to the school in time to warn everyone? And with Adrian uncontrollable and on the loose, no one knows what his next move will be. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Angel and Faith Season 10, Number 11. Faith returns to London. Long missing from the scene in Magic Town, the Slayer is back and ready for action, which is going to come as a surprise to her old evil-finding teammate, Angel. Next, we have Ghost Number 12. Reeling from the loss of a dear friend, Ghost delves further into Chicago's labyrinthian underworld in a search that leads from back alleys to the corridors of power. She may unearth a conspiracy, but can she find it in herself to bury the past? We've also got Ghost Fleet number 4. With a mysterious voice coming through the CB radio, Trace begins to comprehend the deadly nature of his stolen payload. His old friend Ward, director of the Ghost Fleet, will do anything to retrieve that truck, even hiring loose cannon bounty hunter Mickey Reno. Also in this issue, Truckosaurus vs. Destroyladon. Next, we have The Goon, Once Upon a Hard Time, number one. After the tragic events of Occasion of Revenge, the witch coven believes that control of the unnamed town will soon be in their grasp, and the goon's tragic soul will contribute to the curse that increases their power. But has their plot destroyed the goon or created a monster too savage for them to withstand? Once Upon a Hard Time is a climactic miniseries that has major consequences for the goon and his supporting cast. If you're a goon fan, you can't miss this. 
We've also got Hellboy and the BPRD, 1952, number 3 of 5. Hellboy's first mission takes an ugly turn when one of his team members turns against him. Will Hellboy be able to survive the assault from within the BPRD and the onslaught of terrors hiding in the ancient fortress above? Next, we have Lady Killer number 205. Josie's life grows more complicated than ever. Between the demands of her family life, including her disapproving mother-in-law, the challenges of performing as a ruthless assassin, and being underestimated by the men she works for, how can she do it all and make it look so good? A new original series. And we've got Rat God number one of five. Terrible things stalk the forest outside Arkham in this chilling original tale from comics master Richard Corbin. An arrogant city slicker on a quest to uncover the background of a young woman from the backwoods finds horrors beyond imagining, combining Lovecraftian mutations with Native American legends. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Battlestar Galactica Death of Apollo number 3 of 6. After years of silence, the Cylons have returned, and their first strike at the fleet has cost the life of Galactica's favorite son, Apollo. As the grieving Galactians struggle with their loss and Starbuck contemplates reckless revenge, Adama must find focus and contemplate the odds. The Cylon threat is stronger and more insidious than ever before. Unless the fleet can defeat or outrun the Cylons, humanity will soon be dead as his beloved son. Shocking drama and continuity-shaking military science fiction action from the acclaimed cosmic creative team of Abnett and Dietrich Smith. Next, we have Django Zorro, number three of six. Our heroes finally arrive in Phoenix in their first encounter with the self-proclaimed Archduke of Arizona, whose charming demeanor is tinged with the merciless arrogance. Diego is welcomed into the Archduke's inner circle of wealthy investors, but Django soon finds himself exploring behind the scenes with the silent but intrepid Bernardo. The Archduke's massive railroad project is being built by the local Yaqui tribes, who are all but enslaved by their master's tyrannical regime. This exciting series is the first ever sequel to any of Quentin Tarantino's films and features one of the original Western heroes, the masked crusader known as Zorro. Story by Quentin Tarantino, script by Matt Wagner. We've also got George R.R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones number 24, final issue. Driven by the need to avenge his father's murder and clear the name he himself is not permitted to bear, Jon Snow breaks his solemn vow and deserts from the Night Watch, an action for which there's but a single penalty, death. Meanwhile, Eddard's heir, Rob Stark, seeks to rally his bannermen, not all of whom are eager to follow the young, unproven leader, no matter whose son he may be. And Daenerys, grief-stricken at the death of her husband, Drogo, builds a great funeral pyre to consume the hollow remnants of her life, only to find herself present in the fiery birth of a new age. Next, we have King Jungle Jim, number one of four. He is the forest. Welcome to the king. Full of rustic wars and bestial bluster and unforgiving terrain and impossible origins and enigmatic abilities and creepy domiciles and really, really, really weird monkeys. Strap in for High Adventure from Eisner Award winner Paul Tobin and Sandy Gerald with a connecting king cover by comic legend Darwin Cook. We've also got Lady Demon, number two. Too many questions and not enough answers, that's the situation Violet Sparks finds herself in. Everyone she ever cared for is dead, and to make matters worse, she's inhabited by a vicious demon that desperately wants to take control. That may not be such an unwelcome proposition when the bullets start flying and the death toll mounts. Next, we have Legendary Vampirella, number one of five, a return to Bill Willingham's fantastical steam pulp world of Legendary. Vampirella comes home from the epic battle in the Principality to find her that her Scarlet Club has been closed and powerful forces within the big city are conspiring to destroy her, but they quickly learn they pissed off the wrong immortal vampire. We've also got Red Sonia Vulture's Circle number two. Following the fight to the death with one of Sudek's demonic advanced scouts, Red Sonia and her prized pupils Lila and Zona return to their school with the renegade priest Sekif in tow. After the Stygian reveals that the half-human son of the serpent god Set is marching forth to reclaim the world for his sire, Sonia realizes that the world is in peril. But before she can decide whether to come out of retirement one last time, the school's compound is attacked by the Eaters of the Dead, a legion of flesh-eating undead created by Sudek from those who have dared to defy him. Now Red Sonia, her longtime companion Yusuf, and her young pupils must battle not only hell beasts and ghouls, but the terrifying son of Set himself in a bloody fight for not only their lives, but their souls as well. 
Next, we have Shaft number three. John Shaft didn't go looking for trouble. It came looking for him, and in the process, a lot of people died. Devastated by the murder of a friend, Shaft wants answers and revenge, though not necessarily in that order. With vengeance on his mind and cold steel in his hand, Shaft finds himself caught up in the brewing gang war that threatens to consume the city. Everyone from the mafia to the police wants Shaft to do their dirty work, but no one realizes that's all part of his plan. And we've got Vampirella number 9, In the Dragon Chariot, the third chapter in the Accursed Story arc, Fresh Outbreak of the Dreaded Black Rabies, a plague that turns those who suffer from it into raving homicidal maniacs, sends Vampirella and the Cabal's top field agent, the werewolf Tristan, to Athens, Greece, in search of the second accursed involved in Dr. Faustus's plan to end the world. The evil alchemist co-conspirator is none other than the legendary sorceress Medea, scorned wife of the hero Jason and granddaughter of the sun god Helios who was cursed with immortality by Zeus for murdering her own children. Can Vampirella and her new allies stop Medea before she spreads the contagion throughout the world and uncover the identity of the mysterious source of the cursed blood used to create the murder plague? From IDW Publishing, we've got G.I. Joe number 5, Fall of G.I. Joe. Tensions escalate as new dangers emerge. What can the G.I. Joe team do to combat a cobra the world views as heroes? As Scarlet leads the team, former G.I. Joe agent Duke searches for answers. Next, we have Skylanders number 6. The brand new three-issue story arc legendary concludes here. Join us for the conclusion of this special bi-weekly event as some of your favorite Skylander characters face grueling tests, outrageous challenges, and the violence of villains to gain legendary status. And we've got Transformers More Than Meets the Eye number 37, Desperate Measures. Four million years ago, as Cybertron teetered on the brink of all-out war, a group of Autobots decided it was time to take matters into their own hands. Everyone concerned would subsequently agree that this was a very, very bad move. From Image Comics, we've got Birthright number 5, The Never-Ending War on Tyrannos rocks our world as Mickey battles one of its greatest warriors to the death. No one is safe as Birthright's first arc comes to an earth-shattering finish. Next, we have Cal number 8. Thanks to Camden Stone, Jeffrey Warner has the villains he desperately needed. But at what cost? And how long can Jeffrey keep the lie going? We've also got Dead at 17, Blasphemy Throne number 6 of 7, Wrath Unleashed, Judgment Delivered, Earth No More. Next we have East of West number 17, Fallout, in which we see how the horror of war has affected each and every nation, and which nations will crumble and which will rise. The Apocalypse Year 2 rumbles on in East of West number 17. We've also got Egos number 5, Beginning Crunched, the Egos' biggest storyline yet. The narcissistic super team of the future returns to battle an invisible threat to the galactic economy, featuring the erratic Prisoner 7, the Commander, aged hero of the Crunch War, and a few cruel twists. Next we have The Humans number 4. Welcome to the skin fights, baby. The humans visit Flex Trucking to do a little business and have a lot of fun. Deals go down, bets get made, and skin fighting, homo sapien cockfighting, is the sport of the day. We've also got Nailbiter number 10. All of the town's children have gone missing, and only the notorious serial killer the Nailbiter can help Sheriff Crane and Finch find them, but at what price? Next, we have Nameless Number 1. An astronomer kills his family, then himself, leaving a cryptic warning. A veiled lady hunts her victims through human nightmares. An occult hustler known only as Nameless is recruited by a consortium of billionaire futurists for a desperate mission. And the malevolent asteroid Exabalba spins closer on a collision course with Earth. But nothing is what it seems. A terrifying, inhuman experiment is about to begin. Abandon all hope and experience ultimate horror in Nameless. We've also got Oddly Normal number 5. Oddly Normal's horrible, terrible, very bad first day of school finally comes to an end. Next we have Postal number 1. The townsfolk of Eden, Wyoming wake up to their first official murder the town has seen in 25 years. Their reaction to this isn't normal, and there's a reason for that. Eden operates as a haven for fugitive criminals who remain here while new identities, often including facial reconstruction, are created for them. There's zero tolerance for any illegal activity that might draw attention to the town, and an official murder is the last thing they want. A single, tight-knit family runs Eden with the youngest oddball son, Mark Schifrin, overseeing the postal branch, the only means of shipping in or out of the city. The FBI has repeatedly been foiled trying to insert an undercover here. They see Mark as the weak link to exploit. This murder gives them a new opportunity. 
We've also got Saga number 25. Saga is back, as is almost the entire cast. And as thanks to retailers and readers for helping our audience continue to grow every new arc, Fiona Staples created an amazing wraparound cover for this action-packed issue, which is still only $2.99, the best deal in comics. Next, we have Shelter number 14, The End Draws Near. We've also got Synergy number 4. Jess's monster lover returns professing love, but she senses a trap, not romance, as the seers prepare themselves for the inevitable monster invasion. Next, we have Spawn number 250. This huge triple-sized 250th anniversary issue marks only the second time an independent comic book has reached such a lofty number. This issue marks the cataclysmic climax in the story of the current Spawn, Jim Downing's final struggle against his costume while the fate of New York lies in the balance. From the ashes of that battlefield comes the long-awaited return of the original Spawn, Al Simmons. The celebration of this anniversary issue will feature covers from Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo, Scotty Young, Jock, Sean Murphy, and Philip Tan. We've also got Stray Bullets, Sunshine and Roses number one. Stray Bullets continues with the beginning of a brand new arc of stories. Sunshine and Roses is about violence, love, and really bad decisions. The Baltimore underworld is falling apart at the seams and blood has been spilt. Where and when things went to hell in a handbasket can be traced back to a time a few years earlier when a man named Harry ran the city, Spanish Scott and Monster enforced the rules, and an insecure young man named Orson met a wild and crazy girl named Beth. The two together cooked up the boldest, most outlandish, and just about the stupidest plan ever devised, a plan to steal a whole lot of Harry's money and drugs and get a little revenge along the way. While every issue of Stray Bullets presents a complete story, the start of each arc is the perfect place to jump on board and see what everybody else is talking about. Next we have Velvet number 9. Velvet walks a deadly path into the past for answers as her story takes its darkest turn yet. And we've got Witches number 4. Now with the true nature of the witches revealed, Charlie descends into the earth in a desperate race to save his daughter and his family from an inconceivable fate. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Imperium number 1, a daring new superhero saga from New York Times bestselling creator Joshua Dysert, writer of the Harvey Award-nominated series Harbinger, and superstar artist Doug Braithwaite of Unity and Justice. Toyo Harada is the most dangerous human being on the planet. Imbued with incredible powers of the mind, he has spent a life guiding humanity from the shadows. But today he is a wanted man. His powers are public knowledge, his allies have turned to enemies, and he is hunted by every government on the planet. Instead of surrendering, Harada has one last unthinkable gambit to play. To achieve more, faster, and with less, he will build a coalition of the powerful, the unscrupulous, and the insane. No longer content to demand a better future, he will recruit a violent legion from the darkest corners of the earth to fight for it. The battle for Utopia begins now. And we've got Exo Manowar number 33. Exo Manowar has beaten the vine, survived the armor hunters, come face to face with the armorines. Now he faces an unimaginable threat, a threat from beyond the grave. The lesson needed to defeat them resides with his past and the greatest love of his life, Deirdre of Dacia. But the last Eric knew of her, she was captured by the Roman legions and heading toward a slave camp. Her story, however, did not end there. Heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. Join New York Times bestselling writer Robert Venditti of Green Lantern and The Flash and rising star Rafa Sandoval of X-Men Legacy for this special done-in-one jumping-on-point issue, revisiting a mystery rip from the pages of XO Manowar number 1. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at He'sGotIssues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney and I've got issues.